Okay, could you show us previous? So after the main vessel optimization, the before circumflex wiring, usually I, uh, usually I, I, I did the main vessel optimization. Uh, next, please. Using the two, uh, three O high pressure balloon, I have the I like to do optim to achieve the optimal stem result in the mid LAD, flux LAD. This is a high pressure balloon four O because the flux LAD and left main is more than four O size based on the IBUS. Next, this is a four O up to twenty eight. Four O high pressure balloon twenty eight is your final balloon size is four point five. So left main is five O. Next, please. Next, another optimization. Next, next. After full optimization of uh, main vessel, and then I try to next, please. Rewiring to the circumflex. Circumflex wire is not not that difficult. Next, please. So insert after insert wire, the using the LED anchor balloon, I uh, delivered the uh, 1.5 small balloon first, and then this is a 4O high pressure balloon, because the circumflex ostium is more than 4O based on divers. Next please. Next please. This is a final kissing balloon. Next please. Yes, this is a final angel. A AP quarter view, next please. Area cranial view, next please. This is spider view. So the, this is uh, my procedure. The angiographically good, so I'd like to finish my procedure. Okay, this is a great result. Con I'd like to congratulate your successful revascularization. Thank you for your nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's visit to another case rep, Dr. Lee. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Can you explain your case? Uh, my my <laughs> right side is Dr. Bear and Dr. Ba. And could you introduce our case? Okay, sir. Uh, this is 61 years old male patient, and he had admitted for effort in China. Uh, his coronary risk factors were hypertension. Uh, uh, about Seven months ago, he received PCI at left main to proximal LAD and proximal circumflex. Coronary angiogram showed total occlusion at mid RCA and severe stenosis at proximal LAD and proximal circumflex. Subsequently, he received left main to proximal to mid LAD and proximal circumflex two weeks ago. Next, please. Next, please. And his echocardiography showed normal <coughs> LB function, and unfortunately, we didn't perform treadmill test or thallium spec. Uh, next, please. Yes, this coronary angel, this last coronary angiography showed perfectly performed PCI at left main to LAD and circumflex. Next, please. And uh, the RCA images are not. Uh, <laughs> 영상 좀 보여주시겠어요, RCA? RCA? Okay. Yes, this is the final angiography of the patient's RCA. And as you can see, there's a uh, very severe stenosis at mid RCA, but it's actually not the CTO lesion. Dr. Lee, please. Yeah, we checked the baseline angiography. As you can see, there is some breach collateral and the integrated flow maybe exists. Is there another view, uh, Dr. So Lee? another angle. Yeah. 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 yeah there is some. I think maybe there is some connection. However, not clear. So in this kind of situation, maybe tip angiography with the micro catheter is helpful. So we introduce the micro catheter. According However, to the still there is some. Dr. Lee, I'm sorry. The, according mm. to the decision, mm. CTO is it uh, patient deserve to treat because uh, territory is not that big, and uh, what is the sum of the myocardium of you know geopardized myocardium? What is the criteria right now in Korea? This conference is a technical forum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. 
<laughs> Good answer. <laughs> So, so in the patient cl clinical practice, <laughs> you would like to, to treat this patient uh, with medication? Yeah, maybe the patient, the chest pain is gone after the left main and circuit treatment, the patient no, no complaint of chest pain during exercise. So if the patient is uh, uh, maybe, if no symptom, maybe the uh, medication is another option. So could it be a good option? Because of currently, uh, so many data is suggest uh, symptom improvement is the only indication for CT or PCI currently. Okay, we have many experts so, here. Uh, yeah, Dr. Murmati, comment? Talking about indication? I, I mean the technical. <laughs> Technically, okay. <laughs> Technically, yeah. it's the most important, most in difficult issue is the uh, indication of this this uh, error mm. for CTO. The technically, because of technically, all, almost they established the very uh, well uh, established the technique and the device and uh, strategic problem is almost the established anti-grade first, usually anti-grade first, and wire escalation, if you do not uh, try to the uh, power wire and tend to the retrograde ADR or uh, retrograde approach. So that that is uh, almost a common sense in, in, the, in the world. But uh, mm, I, I remaining the problem of the, the indication of the CTO is very, very difficult. So the uh, Dr. Lee said the only indication for the ischemic relief. So that is a, yeah, most of the patient of the CTO is a non, non symptomatic okay. patient. That is a problem. I, I think this uh, patient is very young, just six years uh, old male, uh, probably is very active alive. Even though he is not symptomatic, that is a result of accommodation. Uh, of his life to such kind of perfusion. Why not? Just just five minutes intervention will salvage normal flow to the inferior wall. I think the distal uh, territory is not so narrow. So I think th this case is definitely indicated for C2 intervention. Not C2. Okay, okay Dr. Lee, could you explain your uh, strategy? Yeah, just we start the wiring and then angiography after we introduced the polymer jacket, taped the wire, peeled the XTR. What is your suggestion of first wire? In, could you panel command the preferred wire this kind of situation? I think certainly the, when you have the, this amount of collaterals, the, these tip injections are very helpful. Sometimes a lot of times it's very difficult to see and, and you get false impression of what is a microchannel or not. Mm. Um, here it looks like there is something, so I think um, you know trying with um, a catheter to serve a bit of the microchannel will be a first order of business. So an um, XTR um, yeah. seems reasonable. I think in in Taiwan or in in Japan, usually we're working with a biplane for this case because the aerial view might not decrease, you know, differential between the region collateral to the main RCA. So aerial view might be more better because sometimes you might misleading, but you have a good progress. But even if you have a good progress, we need to, to check with, uh, double check with aerial view. Yeah, there is some classification. However, I think the JHTO score is the zero, so <laughs> it can cross easily, usually success rate around 99% of this kind of situation. So, however, uh, currently, you can, you know, the ischemia trial showed that the, you, you must know the most important thing is plaque, not ischemia. Mm -hmm. So I think the, uh, this case is also stable angina, already treated the left main territory, so I think that maybe uh, medical treatment could be one of the options. The patient is asymptomatic. So anyway, the wire easily advanced with the polymer jacket wire. Polymer jacket wire means the very slippery and follow the flow easily. And the cosia is maybe also follow. I think the, I, I the think problem. This, yeah. We don't have any pictures before the left main. The left main has been intervened twice already. Yeah. So I think you know keeping the right open um, likely will help him because the left main may have another problem down the road again. 
Okay. Uh, so I think this will give him some protection. Some cor yeah. And, uh, you know, because given the left main is done twice and you never know what a reason gnosis will happen again. So I think this may be a good indication for that, you know. Uh, that is an additionally important factor. Yeah. Dr. Lee, I think you have uh, almost tolerance. finished your case, <laughs> and uh, Dr. Bach is yeah, waiting yeah, yeah, for yes. uh, the demonstration. We uh, will be visiting you again. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Le let's move to Dr. Bach's lab. Hello, Dr. Bach. Okay, good morning, everybody. Again, as we are preparing another half lab main cases, and uh, Dr. Gang and Dr. Sung Chul Jo, uh, Mr. Zhang, and our colleagues here. So who's introduced case first? Yes, the mm -hmm. case is the 80-year-old gentleman, a 21st angina. Uh, he has the history of hypertension, and after checking the angio, the angiography showed left main bifurcation disease and the visual RCA disease. Next. And next. And the echo was normal. Next. And we checked the angiography. Next, next. Next. And I will show you left side again, and the right side shows diffuse disease, and the, we checked the FFR and 0 0.82, so deferred. And we'll, uh, here now, we'll treat the okay. left main. All right, yeah. this is Ario playing a uh, sh uh, shallow caudal view. Uh, clearly shows some uh, silicon stenosis, proxy diffuse disease, the testal part of the main is some, uh, you know, angiographic lobsters over there. Would you show uh, next one? All right, epicranial view is clearly, uh, you've seen the lobster, the plague on the distal part of the main, basically very much diffuse disease, uh, some disease involved in the first diagonal, the second diagonal, and uh, distal LED too. Okay, would you show next? <coughs> Another? All right, spider view, please. Okay, great. So, Look at this, uh, exactly the same <coughs> so findings in some disease on the proxerid and distal uh, main and osteal part of the circumflex is also involved. And we're going <coughs> to do the obvious uh, separate lungs from the LED and circumflex to, you know, to save the time. So we have already done obvious. So yeah. Dr. Wang, would you explain that one? Right. Yes, this is obvious. LED first? Yes, this is the LED run. Okay. The CLD, uh, where the big septal branch comes in, and the view disease begins from the mid LED. And you can see the vessel size is about 3.0, and now at 6 o'clock, the big septal branch came in. And vessel size is a little bit bigger here, about 3.5. And you can see a small diagonal branch comes in at the opposite side of the septal branch. And the angiography, it looks uh, not so tight, but if you uh, check the eyeballs, there will be a huge amount of the plaque, and the diagonal branch came in, and next, the proximal LAD is full of the plaque, very tight stenosis, and the vessel size is about 3.5. Almost 4. Yeah, almost 4 here. And you can see the superficial calcification inside the plaque. And here is the proximal LED, vessel size is much larger, more than 4.0, about 4.5. And diffuse, huge plug. Mainly soft plug. Mainly soft um, plug here. There may be transit to the distal main here. Yeah, yes. Here, another one to check the left main. Now, so we want to check some. Yes, the, the circumflex mania, right? wire is comes in from the nine o'clock. Stop here. Stop. Maybe at twelve to two o'clock, okay, there's some ruptures yes. opening in the internal. Okay, go ahead. Size wise, almost more than five. Big yes. one, right? Very big, like the main. And there's a rupture cavity. Mm -hmm. Okay. And here's the. Would you show us a circumflex run, please? Yes. Circumflex. This is circumflex run from the proximal circumflex. We must check the another run from the side branch to see the opposite uh, accurate uh, shape of the osteum. Here you can see 
that the opening of the circumflex is very tight <laughs> with focal tenosis. Well, your focal circle over there are pretty, you know, uh, much of a plaque yes. and significant disease. And so would you show us uh, first a step of a spider view? Stented. All right. So, all right. Uh, we're going to uh, save the time. So, so we're going to plan to save the first diagonal branch and se second diagonal just wiring for the protection and the first diagonal is big enough. Uh, however, there are really technical difficulties to uh, you know, pass the wire in the first uh, diagonal branches. Um, I don't know. Exactly. And after the balloon inflation for the main branches, 275, 3 still <clears throat> we cannot pass the wires, the first diagonal branches. So uh, 80 year old gentlemen so, so we're gonna focus on the so at the next stage we're gonna focus on the you know just the main intervention focusing and next please we do all right balloon inflation for the main branches to pass the wire for the downer branches is very difficult almost impossible and then as a first step we deploy the stand for the circumflex osteum and next all right, <coughs> and nominal, what size? 3.5. 3.5, yeah. uh, 15. Yes. Uh, 15. Yes, it was giant stand. All right, and we, in, uh, you know, inflate up to the almost 20 atmospheres and indentation disappeared. And next, please, pull a little bit out of the balloon and high pressure inflation, 20 atmosphere, and then we do quite good uh, patents of a circumflex osteum. Next, please. So we do balloon cross first, uh, a very tough calcific lesion uh, in terms of a proximal part of the superficial calcium, etc., etc. And so we do balloon inflation for that. Okay, right. And as a next step, so we're going to do another balloon. Uh, 3.5, yeah, non-compliant balloon. Yeah. All right, there is the last step we did. So I want to show what's happened in terms of uh, audio. Audio color, please. Okay, great. Uh, relations between the circumflex osteum to Proximal LED. All right, there are some dissections for proximal LED. And so we're going to measure the in terms of region length from the big uh, septal to the ostial part of the main. It would be uh, 48 millimeters or something. And so we choose the just only one uh, 48 length of a 35. What is what is the uh, this is giant 3.5 by 48. 48, yeah. all right. So, test please. We, all right, just above the septal perforator to the ostial part of the main. Test please. Okay, what do you think? It's good. Position wise, yeah. it's good. Okay, spider beam. I don't know, cranial. Cranial. It says that the circumflex okay. has been uh, rewiring or original Test crush please. before crush you maintain there. All right, just above the septum. Uh, what is the nominal? Inflate? Maybe you take the wire out. Yeah. Take the wire out. Take the wire out. Okay. Yes, All right. Great. I don't want to, you know, high pressure. The reason why the distal part of vessel size is 3035 uh, between the two. And <coughs> 35 uh, nominal pressure would be good. Okay, deflate. <laughs> then. So SJ, we were asking, is it circumflex wire uh, jailed, or is it a, a, you have rewired it already? It's just in, in the, right, in the circumflex part, all right. Okay, inflate, a little bit high pressure. Okay. And do. I want to show what's happened to play. To play. Okay, test finish. Test it. Test it. 
Okay, picture first. Right. When we analyzed yeah. the COVID-3 registry, the total number is about 2,600 patients of bifurcation. Among them, about 500 patients were treated with two stand technique for left main. What do you think? And most popular sure. technique is uh, crush. <coughs> so he did typical, typical yeah, crush. Typical crush. Oh, crush. Because most physicians uh, feel the crush yeah, is sure most crush. comfortable. Then T stenting and cure. So, so it's not a DK crush. Uh, so that would change the proposal. Yeah. It's too cumbersome. Yeah, I mean, DK crush has some advantage, but most of it is trying to help you rewire and send the balloon through. But More. I think I see Dr. Cox <laughs> mainly <laughs> using oh, no, 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 an anchor balloon and LED. So oh, yeah. that may you know, make uh, things maybe, a little simpler uh, so that you don't have to rewire so many mm -hmm. times. You know. mm -hmm. All right. But it is, uh, you know, up to this point, we do uh, you know, circumflex stand and balloon crochet and 48 millimeters, so 35 long stand for the uh, LED to remain. Actually, there is more compromise the first diagonal branches. We only expected that. Uh, mm -hmm. However, uh, you know, very tight stenosis in the old age is 80. And I think it's more compensated the uh, blood flow also from the control rotor. But any, uh, anywhere, you're going to see that what, what's happened. So, however, no ECG changes. And as the next steps, we're going to do, you know, wire uh, and circumflex. Yeah. And then we're going to do the kissing balloon inflation and the, just to focus on the like, main. Yeah. Uh, right, so uh, we have very limited time. So, however, I would like to, uh, you know, show that in terms of a very much complex region subset, even in the, you know, diffuse disease, LAD, first down or second down or circumflex <laughs> or cell part of disease. However, and depending on the clinical situations, 80 year old gentlemen, we're going to save the, some part of the important, you know, uh, yeah. you know, jeopardy areas. So I think it's quite enough to maintain uh, the remaining survival and symptomatic control, etc., mm. etc. Et All right, that's the brief, uh, you know. As so, uh, the strategy, I, I'm totally it. agree with you, but uh, in these steps, we'd like to do a little bit right. part first, then rewiring. What do you think? Part in the uh, left main to op optimize the stand in the left main, then right. with rewiring because we All can, right. uh, you know, mistake in some while out and in. Right. Yeah. Technically? Yeah, yeah, good idea. Right. How, okay, uh, in terms of a part, right, so many, uh, you know, concern, interest about the part technique. And so finally, if we can, uh, you know, recross the wire circumflex easily, mm -hmm. so I, uh, look at this, we're going to do the finally kissing balloon inflation, at mm -hmm. least a 3.5, 3.5, we're going to make a two stand, mm -hmm. even in the longitudinal, you know, uh, the overlapping two balloon for the distal part of, you know, that main, I think the effective stand area concern is quite enough. Mm -hmm. You know, we need sometimes more than five. So, so it doesn't matter of the, a know, symmetrical index. Area. Right, it's okay. Yeah. Opposition. Our, all right. More important. However, if we didn't didn't touch a circumflex part, all right. Absolutely, I think it's, we need a part for you know this part of the main, etc., etc. However, we're gonna do rewiring, you know, a circumflex and two balloon for the final kissing balloon inflation. I think it's quite enough for particular cases. Uh, personally, I don't need a part for that. One. Okay, why well, yeah, for In that? Korean situation, the government mm. restricts the usage of the balloon catheter. Because, uh, it is not free for Thank us you. to do additional balloon for part. Hey, Dr. Very Kaki, it was a great demonstration. We are going to move to the, uh, another cath lab. If there is no evidence to support the concentric morphology is better than the concentric, then we can do part. We see you on the screen. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Where I guess I? you have finished so the, all the wiring, procedure. Nearly, yeah, <laughs> nearly stented in two stand, uh, implanted, and then now the, we evaluated the post stand imaging post stent optimization. In CTO guide, does not need, uh, focus on the stent optimization. So I think the even uh, CTO is a very large plaque burden. So I think the stent optimization is the most important reason. So I think the Stand optimization very important based on our data, analyzing the 1,000 case stand optimization, minimal stand cross section area more than 4.9 is maybe uh, cut up value for predicting the 
future cardiac event. So I wanted to try uh, make the larger stent cross-section area. So could you see? 알고 싶어 보고 계신가? 네, 저도 썼어요. So currently the put the stent 2.75 and the 3.5 stent is implanted in the distal portion and proximal portion. Uh, Dr. Lee, so one, one this question. This portion is maybe proximal. One question for you because sometimes yeah. it's CTO, you might see a lot of negative remodeling. So what is your considering landing yeah. zone? This is uh, usually been asking the questions. So what is your strategy for yeah. landing zone? That is a very important issue because of the uh, when you select the stand size, there is some negative remodeling. You, you have some concern about the distal dissection of the stand. So usually narrowed portion is the in Ibis finding showed some internal elastic lamina is the echo bright portion is may mean the negative remodeling and spasm. So at that portion maybe mm -hmm. need some larger stand. Because of the follow up angiography showed 30% enlargement of distal vessel. So you can choose the uh, one size larger stand based on the uh, IBUS finding. So I think the IBUS is very important in CTO, especially to choose the landing zone and to choose the stand size. Because of the negative remodeling, we have some concern about distal edge dissection. Okay, could you see the IBUS? Yeah. There are so many IBUS criteria to opti for stent optimization. However, I think the uh, our focus is the minimal stent cross section area. <coughs> Could you measure the most narrow portion? Yeah. Okay, this is proximal edge. And stent optimization is, uh, I think, the not bad. So, proximal portion is also good. So there is some narrow, if there is some narrow portion, I wanted to make the post dilatation. Okay? Usually in CTO, this are edge stain cross section is the most narrow portion. Oh, acceptable based on our data. So could you want to do the post dilation more, Anju? I think the size is uh, optimal. I can accept this result. Mm. Okay. Okay. There is some space. I think the some nitro. Yeah. Because usually so getting you, you bring this patient back, for example, two three months later, that distal vessel will be grown up. Uh, yeah. Usually, yeah. that's what quite often. Yeah, so, yeah. what is your? Is it a CTO? You routine bring this patient back, or you, you don't? And this a patient a symptom. Some Japanese colleagues there would bring this patient Simple. for angel follow up, but what the Korean situation? Yeah, and yeah, depend on the uh, research though. If the patient in the some this some research, I think the follow up angel recommend. However, usually practice, we do not recommend the follow up angel yeah, symptom based uh, okay. treatment. I okay. think the may no difference with the follow up angel or the other other functional test. I think. Uh, I know in what the guideline no recommendation routine follow. -up. One of the operator in, in Taiwan, he sometimes he do a crazy things because he opened the vessel because negative remodeling. So he waits. If the flow is okay, he wait for two or three months, bring this patient back, and maybe just spot stenting. What do you think of this kind of practice? Yeah, could you be one of the option? <laughs> so I think the flow is maybe maintained. How we have a chance to the abrupt closure? My uh, personal practice. Institute patient, the unique feature. My personal practice is uh, if I perform CTO intervention oh, and the other vessel intervention, multi vessel intervention, I always perform about one year follow up because uh, symptom clinical endpoint is very insensitive to uh, yeah to deflect uh, the stenosis grade. Thus, uh, I always perform a follow up angel when I perform the complex PCR. Doctor Wakazuma, what is uh, your practice in Japan for CTO follow up? Uh, yes, uh, uh, of course, uh, in generally in Japan, uh, we uh, recommend a follow-up on geography. Uh, regarding this kind of CTO case, uh, uh, maybe uh, six months later, uh, I recommend to do a follow-up on geography.
Dr. Chen and Dr. Uh, Vincent, no, what, what, is, what is your practice in, in Hong Kong? Uh, we don't do uh, routine surveillance and do a follow -up. Um, but we do focus on the patient's symptoms. Occasionally, we do a CT scan to look at the patency of the artery. But you know, CTCA looking at long stents may be sometimes uh, embarrassing. Uh, it's hard to tell whether there's a significant restenosis. But in general, we don't do angio follow -up. Okay, it's not very uh, practical to perform um, okay. routine uh, angio follow-up. But mostly it's uh, either a symptom and also uh, either nuclear perfusion or cardiac MRI follow-up. Okay. So, I presume, Dr. Wu, that you, 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 would, you did the um, CTO PCI first because there were symptoms. So I would say that, you know, if you did the, P, um, the CTO PCI and successfully and the symptoms went away, then I would use that, right? Because if indeed symptoms come back, you might do a follow angiogram because I think otherwise it's too expensive. We just keep bringing people back in the States. Certainly, um, you know, insurance won't pay for any sort of routine follow-up angiogram. Um, but uh, for example, uh, Professor Kim just proposed because sometimes CTO may be asymptomatic, so you need some kind of stress test. Uh, so, uh, treadmill maybe is a good option because it's simple, cheap, and you can, if they have a, uh, something changed, then of course we are reasonable to bring this patient back for angio follow-up. I mean, this okay. patient may need uh, angio follow-up because of the left main, because it's failed twice, but I would say routinely, probably not, because, you know, yeah. again, based on ischemia trial, that, uh, you know, symptoms drive a lot of these uh, repeat stuff so we keep looking at it keep doing things that we just more and more stents and I'm not quite sure that really helped the patient too much okay Dr. Lee you have achieved a great result I think uh, thank you you are <laughs> all right uh, congratulations on your successful result let's move to the uh, test lab 2 thank you Dr. Wait. Kao, we see you on the screen. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Dr. Park, mm -hmm. Dr. Wu, and Alan. We had a very interesting case this morning. Yes. And <laughs> interestingly, I'm working with Dr. Ko here. So by surprise, our both family name in the Chinese writing is the same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'd like Dr. Ko to introduce the case for us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. This case is a 66 years old male present to our hospital with a foot chest pain and a coronary CT from the another hospital showing the three vessel disease. So we Flash. prefer the Flash. CAZ Flash. and uh, find out the uh, proximal LD stenosis, OM2, and the proximal RCA with a negative FFR. RCA was uh, dominant and the FFR was negative. And next. This patient's uh, medical history contains uh, diabetes and hypertension and the smoking and also familiar history. And next. Echo finding shows uh, normal LV function without any uh, lesion wall motion abnormalities. And next, this is a control angiography. RCA is a dominant system and the mild stenosis, but uh, negative FFR. And the circumflex, we can find uh, OM2, the tight stenosis, but uh, quite distal. And next, and this is the LED, and uh, we can find uh, quite tight stenosis at the proximal to mid uh, uh, LAD. And also we can find uh, some stenosis at the D2 or child. This is a control angiography. So Professor Kao, please. Yeah. yeah. So basically uh, today our target is uh, LAD diagonal bifurcation. Uh, in fact, uh, right at the bifurcation, LAD is probably spared. So there are critical lesions upward and downstream. Diagonal ostium is also somewhat diseased, but not that much. So um, what we are doing today is to do a provisional yes. practice. But then uh, we have to prove that uh, after main stenting, the diagonal uh, doesn't need to be touched. So my uh, strategy today is to have a pressure wire in the diagonal, a regular wire in the LAD, and then after stenting the main, with the gelled FFR wire in the diagonal, we can immediately have the FFR readout for the diagonal. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the, that's the strategy today. So Paul, in terms of trapping the so FFR the wire, today. Uh, in terms of trapping the FFR wire, do you yeah. have a choice okay. uh, uh, which brand or you don't care which brand will be a problem or not? I don't care. We, I have trapped uh, a Comet wire as well as a St. Jude pressure wire, but I think both systems can be trapped. Yeah. 
So uh, taking out the trapped uh, pressure wire is not a problem. The reading of the FFR after uh, gelling it is still the, uh, not a problem. And I find this uh, a very practical uh, maneuver because you know once you have stand the main, if you want to rewire into the branch with your pressure wire, no matter which kind of pressure wire you have, still it's going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. Sometimes creating even damage to the uh, ostium, which doesn't need to be treated in the first place. So our practice is to gel a pressure wire in the side branch if we think a provisional is the way to go. Carl, uh, okay. in an area of cranial view, the ostium uh, of D2 is very critically stenosed. So how do you think about uh, pre-ballooning, gentle <laughs> pre-ballooning of D2 ostium before intervention well, of the main vessel? I, th I expect there is a I, certain... First of all, I, I think it's, it's yeah. diseased, but maybe not that critical, first of all. And secondly, uh, if I'm not going to have a dedicated two-stand strategy, usually I will just have a wire down, that, down to that uh, branch without any dilatation before the actual rewiring. Because if you have done uh, dilatation to the ostium, sometimes they will create uh, some minor dissection already. And then at the rewiring, you can create or enlarge the dissection further down, making it a real problem. Mm -hmm. So usually I will just have a wire in position and then that's it, without any pre dilatation to the branch. Is there any possibility? So let you walk through. Uh, yeah? Is any possibility we do uh, both FFR and imaging study for the life? Because the sizing and the lesion prepare also, we need the imaging to, to help us. Of course. Of course. So the plan was to have a regular wire in the LAD, a pressure wire in the diagonal, Ivers both, and then made up our mind. If the ostium of the diagonal is really critically diseased, then we will change to two uh, pressure, I mean, uh, work horse wire and do a dedicated two stand strategy. Okay, so just let me walk you through what sure. we have done so far. Uh, Dr. Gao? The first angel you have. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah. What is your indication for the side range stenting in the case of like, like this? You, okay. you plan so if the after main stenting. stenting yeah. Yeah, if after main stenting, the branch flow is good, FFR is above 0.8, I will just leave it. Osteostenosis okay. assessment is very tricky. In RA cranial view, there is overlap. This osteum, it looks good. But in cranial yeah. view, we can see a very critical stenosis. So I think, so intravascular imaging is critical for this one, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so let me just show you the case, sure. the, the image we have. So this is a AP cranial. You can appreciate, uh, even though there is still some overlapping, but maybe the diagonal ostium is not that critically diseased. We know there are some plaque, yes, but uh, it's not critical. Next one. And this is the spider, showing again the same thing. But the diagonal is taking off in a peculiar uh, angulation. So uh, I would say uh, pre-implant a pressure wire is the way to go. Because after stenting the main, to wire into this diagonal through the strut is going to be difficult. Next, and this is uh, just a regular uh, six French uh, XB 3.5 guide. So now we have a pressure wire in the diagonal, a Sion blue in the LAD. Of course, the distal is in the branch. We have adjusted it later. But then we have two wires in position. Next. And also for your reference, <laughs> Even without any injection of nitroglycerin or adenosine, the, pre the FFR reading for 0. the diagonal was 0. 0.7, point, 0. 0.7 or below, right? Yeah, Six below, something. Yes. Yeah. So without any uh, vessel dilatation, the, the reading is already very low. But we are not sure whether right. this is caused by the ostium or by the proximal LED, right? It's a, it's right. a combination exactly. of both. But anyway, we have done the IVAS. So the first pullback was from the diagonal. Can we show the IVAS? Yes. I was, uh, so this is a pullback from the diagonal. You can see the vessel is of a 2.5 with some plug more distally, yes. But the lumen, I, I would say, is still nice. And we are pulling back, approaching the ostium. This is where it's most critical, but it's not the ostium. It's somewhat downstream. <coughs> and this is one of its branch. There is some calcium, but I think the lumen is still good for a diagonal like this. Diagonal, please. Diagonal. This is this is LED. I'm sorry. This is LED. I'm sorry. Let's go back from the diagonal. Diagonal. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
we were confused. <laughs> so this is from diagonal, yes. right? Okay. Still, the size is about two five from EM to EM. Some plug, yes. What uh, kind of pressure wise is this, Paul? Is this the comet or is this um, St. Jude? This is uh, St. Jude. Okay. This is St. Jude. So you can see the ostium, there is some disease, yes. But I think the lumen is still good enough. And this is proximal LED. So in fact, the, the most critical or the most tight stenosis is actually proximal to the bifurcation. It's inside the proximal LED. And the vessel is of a 3.5 size. And uh, uh, the osteum of the LED is, is healthy. Mm -hmm. So, Paul, one, one experiment you can do is that, okay. you know, if you pull so the diagonal nice. pressure wire back until the sensor is just uh, proximal to the osteum of the diagonal, if you, your number doesn't change at rest, that, that probably tells you that majority of the pressure drop at rest is from the LED and not the diagonal. Yes. Yeah, but you is, don't have to that do that. That is exactly just what we thought. Yeah. But then uh, let, let me show you the pullback from the LAD. So basically, uh, the distal disease, uh, the distal LAD disease is tight enough. And uh, the uh, LAD right at the diagonal bifurcation is actually relatively healthy. But it's of a very short distance. So we think that uh, we don't bother putting two short stents, but rather cover the whole thing. This is the distal critical lesion. This is the relatively spared uh, area. We will see diagonal wire coming in. Yes, from nine. Yeah, from nine o'clock. So this is the proximal critical area. So now we have a understanding of the geometry. We have done uh, uh, exactly what you have uh, tell us. We pull the pressure wire back right to the ostium, but then the reading is still very low. So we think that the, the critical lesion is proximal LAD, but the diagonal ostium is probably fine. Is the number the same, okay. or is it uh, so we'll slightly continue. different? Paul? When you say low, meaning both are because it's resting in this, is that pretty much close to each other number-wise? Actually, yeah, if you go to the NGO next. Uh, I'm sorry, we forgot to record that. Mm -hmm. Actually, we put in a regular wire into the diagonal while we are pulling back the, the uh, pressure wire, mm -hmm. because the pressure wire is difficult to handle. Mm -hmm. And because of this strange angulation, uh, I want to have a wire inside the diagonal before I pull back the uh, FFR wire. Mm -hmm. So when the FFR wire was pulled out, actually the reading jumped to normal once it's proximal yes. to the proximal yes. region. So that's, that's when we decided to advance the pressure wire back in again, take out the reg regular workhorse wire mm -hmm. and stick with our initial plan. Yes. So I think most of the pressure drop for the diagonal is basically the proximal LED instead of the uh, diagonal OSTE. So with that, can we go to the balloon? We choose a uh, 30, 30 balloon 15. to dilate, dilate the whole segment. Up to Next the one. 10 atmosphere. 10 atmosphere, yeah. And after the ballooning, the FFR reading for the diagonal now is already at 0.8. Of course, now it's uh, not uh, without with any uh, uh, stress or hyperemic uh, response. But anyway, we are in the position of putting a stand here. This is a 38, 3 by, uh, 3 by 38 synergy test. So the stand will be gelling the diagonal. Okay, go on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, four, six, ten. eight, ten, ten atmosphere. Twelve. Twelve. So this is uh, 3 by 38 at 12. Okay, deflate. Down. Okay. Now we can test and then we will uh, check our FFR for the diagonal. Okay. Cine ready? Yeah. 
Go. What do you think? Looks good. I think the diagonal flow is still Timmy 3. The Ostium barely changed too much. And now it's time to check the FFR for the diagonal. <coughs> okay? Okay. So we, what is we, the resting index, Sir Paul? Adenosine. Uh, no. I'm sorry? What's the resting number? What is the PDBA at, at before adenosine? Right now? Yeah. We, we, haven't, we haven't given any medication. Uh, now the reading is at 0.91. Right. Right. So please give uh, nitroglycerin 200 mics. Nitroglycerin 200 mics. 200 mics. So the after the ballooning of the, the LED the went to 0 0.80, and then after stenting of the LED, it went to 0.91 yep. at resting index. It's 91. Yeah. Yes. OK, 200 injected. So uh, nitroglycerin 200 mics had been given. We will start the adenosine now. Can you see the Do you have the uh, live uh, pressure FFR? reading? No. Yeah, please show us the uh, FFR you, you monitor. Can you show? Can you show this? Yeah. <laughs> no? <laughs> no. Yeah. But now we have Okay. That. You have that. So we have now started the infusion. The reading is now at 0.87. We will wait. The infusion had just been started, right? Yes. Oh, no. Okay. So now it's 89. Huh? 89. Right? Yeah. Hmm. In fact, it, looked nice. it looks nice to me. What is the reading now? The number 91, 91 huh? Yes. 91. Okay, you, you can you can stop if you think it's okay. If the dose is enough. if I follow stop it still. You can. So basically, we have a normal FFR mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. stenting, right? Mm -hmm. So could you go to Ivas? Let's take a Ivas first. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so uh, the, the FFR is uh, 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 in the normal range. You do not touch the uh, diagonal ostium, right? No. So, no. okay. Uh, After co confirmation of the IVAS, maybe I'll do some uh, further expansion to the proximal segment of the LAD. Okay. And then after that, if the reading for the diagonal is still good, I'll just put it out without doing anything to the diagonal. Okay, Dr. Gao, while you are keeping going uh, your procedure, we'd like to visit another cath lab, okay? Sure, sure. All right. Okay, Dr. An, Dr. Gao. Good morning, Dr. Park. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. I'm Dr. An. So I, I, I took over the stage uh, remaining job. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> previous, <laughs> previous one. Yes, uh, before before so complex wiring, so the uh, usually I like to do the main branch optimization. I apply the four O high pressure balloon for left main bifurcation stand optimization, the up, up to twenty eight atmosphere, and thereafter, I insert the wire to the so complex, and then the LED anchor balloon, and I insert to. So complex balloon, 2.5 high pressure balloon. And next, based on the initial, the IVUS finding, so complex ostium uh, vessel size is more than 3.5. Next, please. So I inserted the 3.5 high pressure balloon to the cell complex. And left to main, uh, proximity to left to main, I inserted the 4O high pressure balloon. Could you show us the final kissing balloon? Several times I did the final kitchen balloon. Could you show us final? Hi. For I think a stent, stent optimization is to me very important. Just so I applied several times high pressure. This is final high pressure stent optimization. Next. 
Next. Left to main is more than 5 ohm. Next. This is a final angiogram. Codal view. Next, please. <coughs> Spider view. In addition, I was finding it also very important to predict the patient outcome. Could you show us the LAD ostium? Run, please. Oh, yeah. Exercise 4O, I applied the 4O high pressure balloon from here. LAD ostium lumen is good. This here is your left main. Left main is 5O something. So lumen is very nice. The major limitation of bifurcation stenting is the circumflex ostium. Could you show us the circumflex ostium? Long bridge. I applied the 3.5 high pressure balloon. Circumflex ostium looks very fine. Could you measure the circumflex ostium area? Okay, here. Okay, circumflex ostium 9.05. Definitely, I, I believe that the patient long term prognosis would be very fine, very favorable. Okay, Dr. An, uh, Could you also Frieda? gain the final angiogram? So, Dr. An, a question for you. So, when you um, recross the circumflex and you use a 2.5 millimeter balloon to, to uh, NC balloon to cross yeah. that uh, jailed, um, crushed stand, right? Yeah, right. And you, you don't think you can cross right. it without the anchor balloon and the LED, right? You usually anchor the balloon and the LED to push that 2.5 under a couple of layers of struts. Uh, or you think you can if, just cross it without? If I can use the smaller balloon, mm -hmm. yes. If if I can use a smaller balloon and new one, new balloon, I can cross the without LED anchoring. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, saving the cost, uh, I I have to use the two point five used balloon. So user balloon is you know very bulky. So yeah. I definitely I need the LED balloon anchoring. Okay. If there is a stand balloon anchoring, is safe and very effective to deliver the balloon, even use the balloon to the circumflex. So I think one, one so lesson is that if you want to do that technique, you know, the A French guy is very helpful because all the other NC balloons get pretty bulky. Mm -hmm. And if you do a six French, it's pretty hard to yeah, get everything right. in. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think by making your commitment in the beginning a little bigger guide, you have a lot more option and also save some time in terms of smaller balloons, 1.5, one, you know, 2.0, you can use used balloons and allow you to um, cut down the cost and time of the procedure a bit. Dr. Ar, one of the question regarding because transfamer or transradio, because right now transradio can be seven French compatible because the great cheese. Well, in the future, I don't, I know that SJ is uh, like to stick with femoral approach, but in the future, uh, seven French for this kind of region also quite comfortable because uh, two high pressure balloon non compliant balloons could be easily to pass. What do you think? So I, I used the four O high pressure balloon and three point five high pressure balloon for final kissing balloon dilatation. So two four O three point five sometimes uh, the seven French guiding catheter is not easy to deliver the two bulky used the, the big non-compliant balloon. So still I favor the uh, A-French. This government restriction strengthened our skill of intervention. And I can see some uh, dye staining uh, in the uh, right side of left main. When you check the IVUS, is there any problem at that side? No problem. Uh, I, I, could you show us the IVUS? Is that the a I think this is due to the Classification or the crushed stand. Crush. Yeah. This is the shadow of a crushed scan, I believe that. Yeah. Lon, please. Here is a left main. Left main is very huge. No definite some complication. Okay, Dr. Gang, it was a great demonstration. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's visit to uh, cast lab number one, Dr. Bagu Park. Okay, 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 Professor Park. And so, and uh, we're going to introduce a uh, second uh, uh, very interesting case. And uh, Dr. Kim, uh, our senior fellow, uh, Sung, and uh, the, could you introduce the uh, patient background? Yes, I'm Dr. Kim. The, this patient, <coughs> let me introduce this case. The, this patient is 71 years old male, visit our clinic complaining of the chest pain. 
Twelve years ago, in other hospital, he underwent PCI from the distal lamin to the proximal AD using the provisional crossover technique. After that, he was symptom free. To, symptom free. He was symptom free during the medical therapy. Medical therapy. Recently, he, he developed the typical angina. For uh, um, um, months ago, the we checked the coronary angiogram. Uh, his CAG shows severe stenosis at the native proximal mid ICA and the severe ISL lesion on the distal lamin to the proximal AD. So we <coughs> four days ago, we ICA region was treated with the stent and DEB. Next. His coronary artery disease risk factor is hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and smoking. Next. So his cardiac function was preserved on the echocardiogram, but uh, we did not the functional study. The coronary angiogram. Okay. So, and uh, she underwent uh, right coronary PCI uh, nearly one month ago. Yes. And uh, if I'm going to summarize this patient background, 71 years old male, and uh, nearly 10 years ago, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, we put the, the uh, Endeavor stand, our first version of the Endeavor at the nearly first generation drug learning stand. So, looking at the uh, area of coral view, uh, we can see uh, there is a. This, is it this first view? First view. Yeah, and so uh, a, a very uh, high, severe narrowing of the left main, and the next one. So uh, looking at the spider view, uh, looks like much ugly and uh, uh, first generation endeavor stand and the shows the diffuse uh, uh, narrowing and the distal lamp main, uh, the anatomy looks like uh, easy, very complex. And next one. <clears throat> so uh, this is the uh, AP uh, cranial view and the shows the uh, endeavor uh, first version of stand and we can see the diffuse narrowing the mid distal part as well as the uh, uh, distal and main part and previous one. So looking at the coronary angio and the uh, uh, previous endeavor stand was a uh, cross of the suck ostium uh, up to the body of the lamp main stenting. So uh, this is uh, not easy to decide uh, uh, how can you treat uh, such ISR region. So uh, any, any comment or any question? from audience and panel? My, my concern is because you have a crossover, uh, not just uh, the relative small, the circumflex, also the big diagonal. So you need to treat two bifurcations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't Definitely, know if the yeah. barking is deserved for this kind of region because the price shifting will be expecting for the mm -hmm. two major branch. So I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. This is uh, one of my questions. So uh, for the instant mm -hmm. debarking, um, current strategy is still not uh, very uh, uh, definite. So uh, I don't know what is, what is your strategy mm -hmm. to considering treating this kind of region. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. laser would not be good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Some other debarking also not that good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, we we don't have an available device for mm. debarking or raise and uh, you know, very good, uh, not easy the situation. So uh, as the next step, could you show us the? <coughs> so we are uh, put the. 아니 내가 해달라는 대로만 보여달라니까. Okay, 처음 와야 하는 것부터. 아까 그 뷰, 승용 씨. So and. Uh, uh, we put the BMW uh, wire uh, to the uh, LED, and the uh, uh, wire passage was so is very difficult. Initially, uh, we select uh, uh, the uh, the choice PT wire; it doesn't pass. The, and the Xiong blue wire; it doesn't pass. The, it takes a long time, more than 15 minutes. And this is a moment is try to wire cross. And next one. Here is the uh, inst uh, we uh, the select uh, another the the uh, Xion blue and uh, uh, the old the two wires uh, failed and this is the workhorse wire uh, the just BMW again and next one. Okay, and then here is a try to the past the uh, uh, the sock ostium. It's not easy. And we try to 
different angle and take a long time, nearly 15 minutes and not easily passed over here. Okay, here. The Japanese then, uh, fashion, they one? usually use a double room and micro caster for supporting uh -huh. uh, cyber yeah, yeah, right, crossing. Right, yeah. But what so about fortunately, in Korea? Yeah, fortunately, and uh, yeah, it's a, we, we sometimes we use the double room caster, <coughs> but it's, you know, fine modulation, the opening of the side branch to the soft ostium is not easy. It's, uh, it's theoretically it's good, but a side branch exact positioning of the ostium is sometimes difficult. So, and uh, fortunately, and uh, after uh, spending up to 20 minutes, and uh, a BMW wire passed well. At, at this moment, we try to the pass the uh, IBUS, but the IBUS doesn't pass the, that means how much you narrow the circle ostium and the next. So, okay, next one. So, and the here, and as in the next step, we put the 2.0 two, uh, two compliant balloon, and the 2.0 compliant balloon is uh, fortunately passed well. Next one. And then here we inflate the uh, 2.0 compliant balloon, next one. And inflate uh, up to 12 ATM, 12 ATM. And then here we show the NGO again, it's uh, still ugly, the, uh, the proximity part and the distal and main part. At this moment, we evaluated the IBUS uh, uh, from the LAD to the uh, distal and main. Could you show us IBUS? Dr. Bak, excuse me. Uh, I must say you have uh, just yes. five minutes for demonstration. <laughs> we are a little bit behind yeah, okay, the schedule. Uh, okay, got it. So, and uh, could, you, could you pass? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is the uh, previous endeavor stand, and the dead was the narrowest part, and then the uh, plot was eccentric. Okay, here is the uh, Prox LED osteum and plug was severe. Okay, and the uh, plug was huge and extended to the distal main. Okay, okay, here is a severe plug. Okay, th that is the distal left main. So, and uh, uh, looking at the edge of the stand, uh, was uh, there are many. Uh, plug of distal main, here is the distal main. So at this moment, in the, I'm gonna check again the angel. Uh, okay, angel ready? We, we uh, additionally do a 3.0 cutting balloon. Cutting balloon 하는 거좀 보여줄까? 얼른 얼른. Here is a, a 3.0 cutting balloon. We do uh, several times the cutting balloon from the prox LED part and the uh, distal left main part, and then we're gonna check again here, and then we decide to next strategy. Okay, push out. Okay, after implantation, after the inflation of the compliant balloon, suck osteum is not ugly, much improved. Okay, spider view. Uh, test, test. Okay, enjoy. Enjoy. Uh, oh, here it looks tight. So, and uh, uh, we all already evaluated the suck osteum and the uh, suck vessel size is just 2.75. And the uh, left main is the previous 3.0 stand. Uh, left, uh, uh, the LED osteum and the practice distal left main is uh, uh, more than 3.5. So, uh, at this moment, uh, what is the opinion from the panel or audience? Uh, if this patient is your patient, how can you do? I guess you are planning crashing. Two stem? Yeah, uh, yeah so our initial plan is a reverse crush. Yeah. So I think if SOC is a big size, yeah. more than 3.5, 3.0, I'm going to do reverse, uh, you know, full technique. It's a, there is a uh, significant plug of the mid uh, sharp to left main. So uh, Gullo technique is a good option to cross off the prox suck and the distal left main. But uh, IBUS evaluation suck uh, artery is not so big, just the 2.75. So it's Gullo technique is uh, not good. If you're gonna put the 2.75 left main portion in plate more than 3.5 is not, not mechanically feasible. So, and the regional editor, we uh, consider another option. I think uh, T-stent would be uh, 
easier for you to do, to uh, crush because mm -hmm. there is yeah, already yeah. one layer of stand. Mm. Thus, I think uh, for mm -hmm. side branch accessibility, uh, uh, upfront mm -hmm. two stand technique would be more preferable. Mm -hmm. Do you think to uh, work uh, a, a DEB in a circ will be an option? Meaning, put a stand obviously in the left main. LED and then recross and open mm. kissing balloon and then yeah, touch right, with the right, right. DEB in that yeah, part. Yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't look very. It, it, yeah, it doesn't yeah, look yeah, like a big different. distribution of the circ. I, I didn't look at it carefully, but yeah. the size not very big, but doesn't look like there's a lot of runoff to smaller part. Mm, mm, mm. So mm. just to avoid. Okay, there, um, there is a lot of good option. Three point five non compliant balloon. Yeah. Okay, so is a uh, uh, next um, my strategy. I think to do. Uh, we already do cutting balloon inflation for a prox LED. Uh, this, uh, the up to proximal stand edge, and then next my choice is this is 3.5 non-compliant balloon, and uh, I inflate fully previous endeavor stand. I'm gonna do uh, additional stand circle ostium. Is the next step is a uh, tap technique, minimal protrusion tap or reverse crush. Is that is uh, uh, the next option? This is 3.5. Okay, Dr. Bach. Yes. Uh, we have to uh, move to the lecture session. Uh, I'd like to uh, okay, see it. your results after the lecture, okay? Okay. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I'd like to invite Dr. Yeah. Gang to give a lecture on uh, hand down a secret of ISR PCI. Dr. Gang, please. Yeah, thank you for the introduction, Dr. Wang. I'm Dr. Gang. I will talk about the PCI for instant restenosis. The rate of the PCI for instant restenosis is increasing, and the may, there can be many causes. One about the mechanical factors like under expansion or fracture gap or tissue regrowth that are causing neointim hyperplasia, neoatherosclerosis. And the ESG guideline recommends DES or DCB for BMS or DSDS, ISR for 1A recommendation, and they recommended IVUS or OCT evaluation for evaluating stent-related mechanical problem as 2AC recommendation. Then DES versus DCB, which is better? Uh, there, can be, there was many RCTs, 12 RCTs for DCB or DES ISR, and also many meta-analysis that compare DCB or DES for ISR, and uh, one, one meta-analysis showed the E is the best option, one showed a uh, similar between DES and DB, and one uh, showed another result. And there uh, was uh, the largest patient level pooled analysis of the 10 RCTs was published in this year. And that they gathered all data, inclu including our list of trial from all over the world. And the, the patient level pooled analysis of the 10 RCTs showed that target region leave vascularization as the primary endpoint was uh, large, uh, higher in DCB group, and the safety endpoint of the all cause deaths and MI and target region thrombosis was similar between group. So data on DCB versus DES for ISR consistently shows that angiographic outcomes are slightly better with DES, and TRR is more frequent with DCB, and hard outcome, including death, myocardial infarction, thrombosis, are comparable between balloon and stent. So um, the, how about the DCB as the first line treatment for first occurred ISR? It can avoid multi-layer of metallic stent, and it, it is an repeatable option for the procedure, and it can reduce need for prolonged depth, but it has a disadvantage in angiographic outcomes and TRR, but comparable heart safety endpoint. So for the DCB procedure, optimal region pro preparation is crucial, and intravascular imaging guidance can be helpful. Then how about the undilatable ISR? How to treat? The hurdle for ISR treatment is calcified neoacerosclerosis. That means the calcification inside the stent. This is a case, the 54-year-old male patient with circumflex ISR. And we checked the OCT, and we could find the severely calcified neointima. And performed NC balloon, calling balloon, scoring balloon, 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 but the post balloon OCT still showed the stenosis with the undilatable ISR. 
in our ASAN PCI registry, all the ISR tended to be more calcific with the uh, older stand generation and ISR duration. And the instance of the calcified nevus atherosclerosis was uh, significantly higher in BMS and older stand. And the calcific ISR needed more aggressive dilation. And finally, minimal lumen area was uh, not significantly different, but a little bit smaller in the more severe calcification. And with that higher pressure, the long-term TVF rate was comparable between uh, the patient with calcified neonatima or not. Then how, about the, how to treat the undilatable calcified neonatima? There is still balloon dilatation with very high NC pressure balloon, and then debulking or atherectomy can be an option. After low tabulation was with 1.5 and 1.75, we can see the disruption of the arc of the calcification, and after applying high pressure balloon, the vessel was dilated. This is final result. And previous two trials compared low tabulation versus poor by in ISR, and without I was met, uh, I I was. Uh, guidance and in the more older uh, era, the low tabulation group showed worse EV event at one year. And another uh, trial, Rosa trial, that used the IVUS guidance showed better result in low tabulation group. So now we are ongoing the Rota ISR trial that comparing rotational atherectomy versus conventional balloon angioplasty with the use of the DB and intravascular imaging, and the, the result can show you, will, will show you the load of the rotabulation in ISR patient, patient. And there is a newer weapons like laser atherectomy or lithotripsy. It's on the, uh, on the research. And how about the recurrent ISR? How to treat? This is a 63-year-old male patient. He received Cypher 12 years ago and Texas 11 years ago and received two times of DCB. And uh, we tried the NC carrying scoring balloon and also rotabulation, but did not work at all. Then how to treat? We can just bypass it. <laughs> so in this case, we received the mid cap and the result was excellent. Then is the intravascular imaging mandatory for ISR PCI? The ESH guideline recommends intravascular imaging for 2A recommendation, but the level of evidence is C. Intravascular imaging for ISR provides information for underlying mechanisms like edge dissection, neonatal hyperplasia, neonatal atherosclerosis, under expansion. I was detected underlying mechanism like the under expansion or intimal hyperplasia, and OCT also could provide information of the underlying mechanism. And OCT also can detect instant atherosclerosis in more detail. And OCT can visualize stent coverage, presence of the thrombus, and calcified neoatherosclerosis in detail. However, uh, does the intravascular imaging guidance improve clinical outcome compared with the uh, angiographic guidance in ISR treatment? There is no data yet. Uh, in the data from the Samsung Medical Center Registry this year, uh, published the data about the complex PCI patient. The IVS guidance uh, showed the clinical benefit, but ISR patient did not. In the Iris DSDB registry, with the 1,200 ISR PCI, there was no difference between clinic, uh, IVS guidance and NGO guidance between groups. Why? The selected patient, probably with the high risk lesions or recurrent lesion, would underwent the IVUS guided PCI, to, so the data would be sell, uh, biased. And the treatment strategy, that means high pressure balloon plus DB or DS, would not differ with the finding of the IVUS finding. And mechanical problems like fractural gap also can be visualized on angiography. But still, I use intravascular imaging in ISR PCI because I believe it can help to prove the mechanism of the risk stenosis and select the optimal treatment modality like high pressure volume for under expansion, oral DS for fractural gap, 
DAB or DES for neural entity hyperplasia, debulking some on dialect where there was sclerosis. And the most importantly, it helps to optimize the acute post ISR PCI result, and also it can give feedback to the operator. And this is my treatment strategy for ISR. In patients with ISR, I use the intravascular imaging, prefer OCT. In case of the under expansion, use the high pressure balloon. And in case of the neurointimal hyperplasia, calling scoring NC balloon, use anything to make bigger lumen. If there is some severe calcification assessed with by the angiography or intravascular imaging, and I apply DES. If there is not, apply DCB. If the uh, ISR is undilatable, consider debulking. In case of the recurred ISR, I use another DS or DEB. And the patient with the recurrent ISR, I consider cabbage for the patient. The most important thing is the prevention. Intravascular imaging guidance during the primary PCI, the first PCI could make lower risk stenosis. And the large effect stent area was the most strongest uh, uh, predictor of the t future TRR. So make the first PCI with a good uh, quality and stent optimization, a first PCI is really important. In conclusion, DS showed better outcome, and DCB is a reasonable alternative to avoid multiple metallic layer. And imaging can help to detect the risk stenosis mechanism. However, treatment is same, dilate as much as possible. And prevention, in better than, prevention is better than cure. Optimal stenting and initial PCI is crucial to prevent the risk stenosis. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gang. I'd like to ask Dr. Muramatsu uh, to give us a talk on the secret of CTO PCI. Dr. Muramatsu. Thank you. I'm uh, talking about the hand, out, hand down the CTO PCI. So as you can see, the history of the PCI for CTO is started in the early 1990s. It developed, developed the milk wire that followed the Conquest Pro. And the prior wire techniques was launched and I was guided. And the tapering wire was uh, launched and followed the toners and the Corsair and the Stingray system. And the Guy series was launched and finally the retrograde approach. So this, this uh, progress of the CTO treatment done, done by the uh, uh, big masters uh, was done by my, our teachers, uh, Dr. Mitsudo Suzuki and Tomai Kato. And uh, we are talking about the integrated approach of the CTO. The first of all, the, of course, uh, analysis and the reading of, of the CTO anatomy is very important on the angiography. And the progress of the CTO guide wire, you can find on the problem guide wire and the new innovative uh, the guide wires. And the integrated approach final uh, important issue is the power wire technique. <clears throat> and the progress of the CTO guide wire, the depend on the, the guide wire choice for the uh, anatomy, especially for the characteristics of the flag of the CTO. The most uh, difficult issue is the proximal cap. Usually, the proximal cap is uh, uh, two, di two different uh, anatomy. The first of all, the, the pro proximal cap with uh, visible micro channels. So at the time, you can you uh, a little bit lucky. You can choose the low penetration force wire with a polymer jacket wire, tapering wire, and then you can you can automatically. The, going to the microchannel tracking and uh, tapering approximate cap of usually uh, same as the uh, visible microchannels the proximal cap you can use uh, the low penetration force wire the, however the sometimes a brown type the, it is a, a no uh, effect to use uh, the polymer jacket wire at the time you can use the intermediate penetration force wire at the first. And usually the CTO body, the contents of the CTO body is relatively fibrous uh, tissues. And uh, if you have a long CTO body, you, uh, we can recommend to step down to the low penetration force wire from the intermediate force uh, wire. And also the distal cap, the relatively hard tissue, 
the sometimes you shoot the escalation from the uh, the soft wire to the steel rubber wire to penetration of the digital fibers gap to go into the uh, digital true lumen. And uh, also you can uh, realize the characteristics of guide wire structure. So the, the shaft performance is a core shaft. Usually, so recently, the favorite one is one piece wire, one piece shaft wire. Uh, all the days, the, some that wire was made from the two-piece wire, but now in the one-piece wire is our main rows. And the coil structures, the coil structure is very important because of the, the regarding for the wire manipulation, one-to-one -one choke. And the tip design, tapering or not, and the coating or not, and tip road. And the coating, the usually the already done the silicone coating, the, the, the plus sometimes uh, the hydrophic and the polymer jacket coating, the double coating, you can make a, a slippy wire. And um, ideal issue is a one-to-one -one torque response. The, if you can uh, do the one-to-one -one torque response, you you can uh, control the wire easily. However, if you can go to the CT or body, usually the cold uh, wire manip manipulation make a initial torque, torque response, the delay to the torque of the tip of the guide wire. This is uh, the, the reason of the web uh, phenomenon. However, you listen to the guide series is a reasonable one-to-one uh, -one torque Talk response was uh, realized, and uh, extreme coil uh, make a better feeling of the talk response compared than before. And theory, the parallel wire techniques, the parallel wire techniques are very important uh, techniques for the integrated approach. The ones go, wire going to the fourth room, in, so you can realize that should be realized early phase. So if you go push the wire deeply, uh, finally you, you didn't see any anything. But the stop, the proximal path, you can see the this information. So the second wire also the, the deviation from the right side. And pull back and then going to the uh, stick to the true lumen. So at the time should be necessary to the turn to the different angle. First wire, second wire deviation, and control back to the push and the mark as the first wire. And uh, aerial view, also the second wire is a little bit one millimeter upper the deviation. So at the time, you can pull back the second wire, two millimeter, and go down to the one millimeter. So that is uh, originally going to the, uh, automatically going to the true domain. And confirm the aerial view also. Uh, wire going to the true. This is a, a typical the parallel wire, successful the parallel wire techniques. And uh, you you can notice early phase deviations of the wire and uh, 90 degrees that the check different angle and uh, deep manipulate, go down to the true room. And the retrograde approach, the cross channel crossing, the septal or epicardial, and the CTO crossing, the IVA separation is very important, and the reverse cut is a, uh, fundamentally the, the, the crossing wire techniques, and uh, sometimes the knuckle wire techniques will be necessary, and the sub intimate stenting. And the septal collateral way is a little bit simple compared to the epicardial channel tracking because of the, the classification. The one is a straight, straight and uh, no bending. The second is a uh, the big and the bending. The third one is a small, the straight. So these three types is a little bit, you, can have, a, you have a chance to the successfully cross of the channel. However, the small, the bending, and the shower type. So these two types is uh, relatively difficult to pass the collateral channel. And if you, if you can uh, notice these three types of the septal collateral channels, you can have a chance. But especially for the recently the 03 guide wire, 
is uh, relatively safe because the tip load is only one, uh, 0.3 gram. This is, uh, the, and however, the, the epical channel turn is relatively difficult because uh, of the case by case. Very tortuous, usually very tortuous, and case by case is a different uh, shape. And if you have a, a perforation, the, the suddenly the tamponade there was occurred. So very uh, tortuous, and uh, how sometimes the SWO03 was function with a caravel soft wire and negotiate. And it should be necessary to the guide injection because uh, uh, keep inside, the wire should be keep inside of the lumen. And uh, sometimes the epicardial channel is big and the guide injection, even guide injection, you can see the, the collateral channel like this one. <laughs> and the back, back up by the uh, micro catheter and the stretch the wire and finally get in the other side. Wow. And uh, knuckle shape, knuckle wire techniques also the sometimes very long uh, CTO, the retrograde and finally, especially for the right coronary, is the proximal, the deviation at the time, knuckle shape, and uh, guide extension, okay. and retrograde wire in the sub intimate space, and back to the, the true lumen. A little bit back in the, the guide extension and the catching it and guiding the mic guide guide extension techniques is a little bit useful. So if you can do not this uh, techniques, the guide wire going to the aortic dissection. Okay, and the TBR is the subintima and the intima stenting almost similar, the 12 months. So the CT operators, first of all, the patient should be necessary patient and sincerely and eager to do the, the job and the cool and the expectation of the next uh, steps and the humble and the finally face oneself. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Muramats. Before we close this session, we'd like to visit the uh, cath lab. Okay, okay, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. Yes, uh, and we have some the moving forward, and uh, this is uh, we finally decided to do the tap technique, and uh, this is the suck osteum, it's a regular stand 3, 4, and 0, and 20, uh, uh, 23. And then this is uh, the exact moment to try to the minimal protrusion of tap. And next one, and the LAD uh, stand was uh, 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 the, uh, the balloon is three, four, and five non-compliant balloon. Next one, this is stand first. Uh, try to exactly small protrusion of tap. And next one, and then here is we inflate uh, three point zero. And the next one, uh, the here uh, is uh, this is uh, uh, and then the stand the. Uh, Balloon is removed and put the three point zero non compliant balloon for final kissing. And next one, this is the three point zero NC balloon. Next one, and this is the three point five NC balloon. It's a full inflate of the 20 ATM. Next one, and we try to do a final kissing. And next one, and next, next one, and there is some slippage. Next one, next one. The finally, we do a final kissing balloon dilation. And next one, and the here is immediate result. It looks fine. So uh, the uh, we uh, evaluated the uh, ibus. Okay, could you show us the ibus uh, uh, LAD part? Uh, this is the uh, uh, distal end of the uh, previous LAD endeavor stand, and the distal edge is good. Uh, lumen was much enlarged. We did the uh, cutting balloon uh, 3.0, and uh, as well as uh, non-compliant 3.5. Could you more quickly? So, and the looking at the, the uh, slowly, and the, uh, for tap technique, one of the most important part, how much longer in the carina is that is the technical the issue. And uh, uh, we can find uh, over here, 
uh, this is a, a Prox LED pod, LED ostium over here. Okay, we can see the over, over Prox LED over here. Just one strut. Okay, could you show again? It's a minimal. Uh, over here, just one strut was minimal protrusion. Is the technically is good. So, and the, one of the problem uh, was uh, could you show us the circle ostium? I was again circle is one Stem and Okay, here a plate. Okay, yeah. play. This is circle ostium 3.0. Just one strut. Minimal uh, protrusion. Technically, it's good. Angiographically, it's good. You stop it. It's a one of the problem. Uh, previous stand was proximal, and uh, there was a, a large of a plug. Uh, you know, 60% some uh, calcified region plug. Is there was some vulnerable to dissection? So after final checking of the ibuprofen, we can see some dissection of the mid shaft part. Could you show us? Over here, over here. Shaft part, we can see some small localized dissection of the shaft part, and then here is the lemon ostium. This is, uh, you know, uh, we are some the wondering how can you treat the next. You know, T stenting is good, uh, procedural outcome is excellent, but the uh, uh, mid part of the lemon is the localized dissection. And you again, okay, how much? Test. Test. Okay, and you're ready. Okay, here. Angiographically perfect. We're gonna fully cover the localized dissection of the lemon. We put the additional stand, uh, totally cover the lemon ostium. We require at least ten small uh, segment of the stand. So at this moment, the I'd like to hear some uh, opinion from moderator and discussion. So what is your opinion? <laughs> is uh, uh, the, everybody yeah. want to additional stand or just uh, leave it alone? So the, the IBIS wasn't obvious exactly. Um, is is it uh, maybe you can show us a little bit more where exactly you talk about the, instead at six o'clock or so? Showing where the yeah yeah right definitely. I think the prevention is very important. So personally, I I always cover until the ostium of left main. Uh, for my mm -hmm. personal uh, experience, I think such kind of uh, edgy dissection, a small dissection, is uh, stable than we expected. Thus, I think uh, we mm -hmm. commend you to uh, prescribe triple antiplate therapy, including silostazol, for several mm -hmm. months, mm -hmm. and observation mm -hmm. would be possible. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the LED stent is uh, just at the ostium, right? That's about, that's the original endeavor stand. Yes. Yeah. 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 Previous LED stand is just one stand. Mm -hmm. Three point zero endeavor, twenty Four. twenty eight, mm -hmm. uh, twenty four. Oh. So we're gonna show another view. So it's uh, my intention is uh, I try to avoid uh, uh, much overlapping of the stand. Okay, test. Okay. Okay. You know, some there is some irregulation of the body uh, area, but uh, we wait uh, ten minutes. There is no uh, further propagation. Okay. And you ready? Okay, so uh, my I, I, my intention is to try to just close observation and uh, CCU one or two day, and uh, I think uh, uh, in our previous uh, expectation, localized dissection usually uh, observed uh, over time. So, so I try to avoid the additional too much overlap the left, left part of the left main part of the stem. Any any suggestion or comment? I think the risk is mainly thrombosis because you have stents in the LED stents mm -hmm. in the circumflex, so it's not an extent into 
those branches. So I, I think, uh, as uh, Dr. Kim suggests, is to you know make sure that we get good antiplatelet mm -hmm. uh, yeah, treatment. Definitely. So you definitely. know whether it is uh, you know Berlinta mm -hmm. or something else when, rather than Plavix, maybe mm -hmm. uh, maybe a good choice, aspirin plus Berlinta, and at least make okay. sure that nothing closes. And I think that Finally, should be fine. Okay. Okay. This is final well, So uh, don't worry. We're going to okay. close the session okay. so that uh, we can move on to the next one. So thank you thank so you. much for your uh, interesting case. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay.